from the other series, the other video, um, we were talking about situational anxiety. From time to time, people go through that. As I was giving myself as an example of what happened to me when I was graduating um, from Greenwich University, I had a very serious panic attack, and there was a little bit of phobia. I was afraid to even, you know, get ready and you know drive to the place and then you know, do my graduation. And it was a situational anxiety disorder at that particular instant. I would say that it was a situational anxiety, but not until it's persistent, it's not a disorder yet. Not until it's intrusive, it's not a disorder yet. Not until it's consistent, it's not a disorder yet. Not until it's edgy and uncontrollable, it's not a disorder yet. So it becomes a disorder when it's persistent, when it's intrusive, when it's consistent, when it's uncontrollable, when it's excessive, when it's inappropriate. That is where you can, you know, term it as a disorder. And that is where you have to just go and get it checked out, get help. Book an appointment with your GP. Your GP is going to make a referral to the psychologist. And then if it persists, maybe they'll make a referral to the psychiatrist. And then they'll book you in for assessment. They'll book you in for diagnosis test. They'll book you in. And then they'll evaluate you from time to time and put you on some medication or some kind of therapeutic um, regime so that you, you'll be... You'll be out of the woods, you'll be out of danger, so that it's not going to be overwhelming, it's not going to affect you in any other way, you can manage it, please, have it checked out. So, let's go to the treatment. Treatment of situational, situational anxiety can be similar to the other anxiety disorders, as I mentioned earlier on, but let's, let's hit on it again. Often, a combination of medication and psychotherapy or counseling is recommended. And the other time we were talking about CBT, which is cognitive behavioral therapy. That is a combination of the psychotherapy and medication will sort of alleviate most of the symptoms and then make sure that you get better with time. So these are some of the treatments when it comes to the anxiety disorders. CBT is going to bring you out of your negative thoughts, whatever triggers you, whatever points that the stresses that makes it worse for you to be very uncomfortable, they will bring you out of it and then they will give you that positive thought so that you'll be thinking positively instead of negatively and that is going to help. So, medications usually include benzodiazepines or selective serotonin reuptake inhibitors or SSRI, you know, medication that will, they, they are called happy, you know, pills in terms of bringing you up to speed with your mood and your behavior. So, benzodiazepines and selective serotonin reuptake inhibitors or SSRIs that will really kick your depressive mood into some kind of a happy mood. So, it's called the serotonin hypothesis. The serotonin hypothesis is when the levels of that chemical in your brain drops, which is serotonin. You become very depressed but the medication is going to uplift is going to bring it up to a certain level that will really sort of um, stir up your mood so that you won't have that negative thoughts so these are some of the medications that you need when it comes to the treatment the most popular benzodiazepines include Xanax, Valium, Clonopin, Diazepam, Lomatizepam and Ativan. 
all these medications have some kind of hypnotic effect. They knock you out in a way. They allow you to relax. They are muscle relaxants, relaxants that relaxes your muscles and it makes you fall asleep. So by the time you wake up, you feel refreshed. You feel reinvigorated. You feel very great in yourself. You feel re-energized. You feel revitalized. You know, so you become very, you know, alive, awake when you take these medications and it knocks you out, you go into your sleep mode and then you come out of it. So it keeps you also cool and relaxed. It doesn't have that effect of you being very jittery and very um, anxious and, and making things worse. The most commonly prescribed SSRI are Lexapro, Celaxa, Prozac, Paxil, Zoloft, and Simpax. So we have all these different kind of medications that help. But then before, you know, your psychiatrist or your doctor is going to prescribe you that, then it means you have been diagnosed. It means you have the symptoms for quite a long time. It's been very intrusive. It's been very persistent. It's been very... It's been very consistent, it's been very inappropriate, it's been very excessive. So, you know, all these factors will, will have to play a major role before a proper diagnosis can be made. Because most of the times, diagnoses are wrong. They get it wrong. But if you are able to let them, let the professional know exactly what is happening, because the patient is the expert. So if you are able to sort of give out your history or whatever is happening to you rightly and correctly with evidence and facts, then your diagnosis will be 99 or 98% right. But if you don't, they will have to, you know, with the processes that you go through in terms of the diagnosis tools, you get the diagnosis wrong and then you get your medication wrong as well and that's going to have a knock-on effect which is not good ripple effect because you are not having the right medication you understand my point so that's what happens so there are so many medications that you can get when ordinary therapeutic sort of um, measures are not working for you it's example CBT if CBT is not really working for you with this cognitive behavioral therapy it's not working for you and if psychotherapy is not working for you then they will prescribe some medication that is going to help as well and with time that medication sets in it kicks in it's half-life sometimes two weeks six weeks for it to start working properly and then they will evaluate how the medication is reacting in your system however Depending on the degree of anxiety, counseling or therapy alone can be sufficient. So, as I was saying, if the therapeutic effects of CBT and psychotherapy is not really working for you, then they will sort of move edge on to give you medication. But not always. If the CBT and the psychotherapy is working for you, fine. There's not going to be any prescribed medication that is going to, you know, is going to be made. So it's not always that medication are being prescribed because it's difficult to even diagnose that in the first place before you start giving medication. So you go through all these therapeutic processes first and if it doesn't work, then they give you medication that will help you. The overall purpose of counseling or therapy is to determine when the anxiety began, what situations caused it, why the situation caused it, and how to prevent it from happening again. So you go through all that questioning and all that counseling. What happens to really trigger the whole situation? When it happens, what are the, you know, um, symptoms that happen to you? 
and what really brings on that situation. So they will go through all that counseling with you, all that talking therapy, all that CBT with you, and then they will devise with you being part of the whole process, 